Welcome back. This is Sashi from All Things Japanese.、Um, today, I want to share with you guys, as a Japanese from Japanese perspective, spent 20 years in my first,、uh, first 20 years of my life in Japan, how I learned English, and then how I transitioned to a quite opposite from Eastern culture to West, Western culture in North America and then established my life, like rebuilt my life from the scratch. In terms of language, in terms of career, in terms of friendships, and in terms of identity as well. So, I'm gonna talk about that today. So, first 20 years I spent my life in Japan, went to, you know, went through the whole like standard Japanese education system, graduated from Japanese high school, and by the end of high school, I was doing better than other people in English. So, I had an a k e n i k u or second grade in English exams in Japan, and It's considered,、um, you know, I would say, let's say 20 percentile, top 20 percentile or so. And after that, I worked two years in Japan as a contract worker, technical te- support technician. And I was basically using in,、uh, Japanese、uh, everyday life. But、uh, during a break or after work, I spent like you know, two hours every day for two years to study,、uh, to prepare to come to North American University. So I studied for TOEFL,、uh, test of English. For foreign language, TOEFL. And I studied, it's kind of like SAT, but easier version of SAT. So I learned about, you know, uh, uh, memorize many vocabularies,、uh, practice writing,、uh, listening by, you know, listening to CNN or、uh, iTunes podcast. Speaking wise, it was hard because nobody speaks English in Japan. And then came to、uh, Canadian college and I transferred to Canadian University, as many of you know, one of the top universities in Canada, s a i m o n Fraser University. And I majored in computer science, I did two internships、uh, Canada, United States, Blackberry, and Microsoft. And after that,、uh, five years combined,、um, I graduated and I got a job in、uh, a local Canadian company, and now I'm working at an American company in Canada as a software engineer. So it's quite a bit of a journey. Uh, for Japanese、uh, high school graduate s t u d e n t、um, first of all, transition to a new culture as well as a language. Because, as you might already know, many Japanese people struggle with learning English, whether vocabularies or、uh, pronunciations or the whole like, you know, the whole, like, you know, subtle, subtleties in the、like, communication, like eye contact,、um, being confident. And be, uh, uh, be standing tall and then speak up because they're not used to speaking up. So that was a huge problem for me as well. Like, first three years,、um, you know, combined with、uh, my low self esteem because of the、uh, language barrier and just a cultural difference in how you know, I was used to speak. Japanese people don't really speak so eloquently, you know, with strong eye contact. So it was kind of difficult, and、uh, my, my、uh, vocal projection was kind of softer and weaker. And also,、um, yeah, so, and then language as well. So, how I transitioned, like how I learned English, was basically I got rid of. You know, Japanese for my 24 7 life for like four years. So once I came to Canada, I stopped using, looking at, or hearing Japanese, none whatsoever, like zero. So, first thing that I did before coming to Canada was to change my laptop to the operating system, to the language setting from Japanese to English to get rid of any Japanese that comes into my eyes. Because I wanted to shut down anything to do with Japanese way of thinking or Japanese language structure. Especially language structure fucks me up quite a bit because, you know, the、uh, language, a Japanese structure and the English sentence structure is quite opposite. Japanese it starts with、um, verb and then subject.、But、English The, you know, subject always comes before verb and then object comes after, right? It's the, quite opposite. And also, Japanese and English are totally unrelated. So, you know, if you're German or if you're、uh, Spanish, you know, some of the vocabularies in those languages are basically、um, derivative 
um, a English or Latin word, right? So it's pretty easy to 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 transition from those languages, but from Japanese to or Chinese or Korean to English, it's it's kind of like Arabic to English or Indian to English or you know what not. So I got rid of that you know language like Japanese, you know, and I stopped checking news in. Japanese. So I was, you know, checking Yahoo News every single day, like Yahoo.co.jp. But I stopped. I, you know, made a rule to myself to not go to Yahoo uh, Japan. Instead, I went to Google News, and that was kind of a commitment, um, you know. And also in terms of friendships and stuff. Well, I didn't see many Japanese students at college. You know, I, I saw many ESL students, like, you know, English students uh, from uh, exchange from Japanese university, but I didn't, I didn't hang out with them because my goal was to get a high GPA at university college to transfer. And their objective is kind of like they're kind of taking summer break because the grades from ESL English class doesn't really matter. And so they're always in a group they're in a kind of like a flock, Japanese bubble, like 20, 30 students. And they always hang out with Japanese or international students. They don't really need to achieve much in their English class. So they're a little bit more relaxed. For me, it was more tense. I need to perform well and then, and then get A or A plus so that I can get scholarships on SFU and then transfer. So because of the difference in purpose and mission and goals, I didn't spend time with those ESL Japanese students. And it was, you know, right answer. And uh, there was one Japanese student in university transfer courses. And I hung out with them, uh, with him, and uh, we spoke English all the time. He uh, spent the uh, last two years in, in Canadian high school, so his English was pretty good. And so, and then also he didn't want to hang out with uh, Japanese ESL students because, you know, when you are studying for academic classes, it's a little more, you know, it's more tasking. So they don't really have time to spend, uh, you know, money or time for, you know, just not going to eat out, you know, every weekend. So, so objective was different and then, so it was kind of natural only natural for me to spend time with uh, people with the same like mission like a goal so I didn't spend you know so so that's a why like I had no time speaking Japanese and that was good I kind of forced myself in the environment where I don't speak Japanese so beginning like first two years three years it was all about trial and errors in terms of making mistakes in like pronouncing this word wrong uh, or coming up, coming up with different vocabularies, or making mistakes in grammars, plural, uh, plurals, and a singular. Um, um, I do even make mistakes, you know, these days. But it's getting making I'm, you know, making mistakes less and less. It's just you no, know, it's 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 only natural. It's kind of like a baby uh, trying uh, practicing to walk. They fail, stumble. In the beginning, but they just you know keep going. They never stop, and eventually, baby can stand up and walk. It's kind of similar. Language is kind of similar. You know, repetition is makes the you know what's the word? Repetition makes the perfect practice or something like that. So, no Japanese, you know, like visually, no Japanese, auditory, no Japanese, um, and uh, after that. Um, also, there was a, a one big uh, reason why I didn't want to and I shouldn't use Japanese because I was eyeing, I was trying to get a paid internship position placement in an uh, English company in Canada and I got it at Blackberry in Canada. To do that, I need to be able to communicate confidently, I need to be able to communicate precisely in an uh, effective manner in English to be able to perform my work as a software developer. So that's another reason why, like the practical reasons why I had no interest in speaking Japanese it was because it was goal oriented. And then I got position interns and like you know Blackberry and Microsoft and that's when I started like you know improving my English first when I was in class school. Because in school 
you probably don't speak that much. You don't really talk that much because you're so, you're so, so, so swamped by assignments, homework, programming assignments, and studying for exams. You don't really talk with friends. So busy. But when you start working, internships, co-ops, not all day long, but you know you communicate, you talk more, and then you know you hear native speakers talking like in a kind of basic daily conversations, like you know, oh hey, how's it going? Or like you know, some few phrases I picked up, like oh, like solving the problem could be you know expressed as like you know, getting to the bottom of it, getting to the bottom of it. You know, there's some few like you know way of di uh, way different way of expressing or uh, conveying stuff I picked up. And those are the ways for me to improve my English. And so by basically spending time, it's kind of called uh, osmosis. Spending time in you know, role models, I adapt and then, you know, I, I, I basically I get acclimated to, you know, those models, like native speakers, the way I'm thinking, the way I'm talking, and pronunciation as well. So that was a big thing that, that most Japanese students don't get to have don't get to experience because they just you know study in the ESL and after school they speak their mother tongue with their you know patriot and they go back to Japan but I was English studying in English and then you know having to communicate in English at work the professional work and after graduating obviously I got a job in software engineering position and that's when my English ac like, you know, improvement accelerated you know, so past two years, even last one year, you know, it's kind of like, you know, not quite, but it's kind of exponential. So first, one year, two year, three year, four years, kind of like this, and then it kind of, you know, exploded like, like this, because more time, like 24 seven, like eight hours a day, every single day, eight hours. I'm, you know, putting myself in like, you know, that, that environment where people speak English and I need to communicate and uh, small talks, and, like you know, chatting and then those. So that for like twenty four seven environment improved my English quite a bit. And also, I kind of skipped. But when I was um, uh, um, freshman, sophomore, no, 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 freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? So at the end of uh, sophomore, beginning of junior, I started attending uh, extracurricular club, and I did. Uh, I went to improvisation comedy club, improv comedy. And also I did a little bit of Toastmasters for public speaking for like three months. But improv, I did like, let's say, I did at least like one year. And that was really scary. But that's the time I really uh, uh, put myself outside of my comfort zone. Um, you know, improv comedy, if you have never done that, it's kind of like a comedy club where you, uh, with local native students, people, you sometimes stand in front of people on the stage and then just perform without any scripts so it's it's kind of acting but unscripted acting so it, it freaks you out in the beginning it freaks me out as well like you know don't have confidence in and i have accent i don't have enough vocabularies i make mistakes in grammar and on top of that it's kind of improv comedy club so you need to come up with something that's humorous not necessarily all the time but you know that was a pressure that's when i Kind of, uh, that's when I uh, learn to 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 make mistakes, I mean, learn to fail, not fail, but learn to 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 embarrass myself and get used to being embarrassed. And that's when I really kind of and you know, grew, because you know many students, uh, Japanese students struggle, because they have you know they they get they get embarrassed speaking their, uh, you know not so good English in front of people, they get embarrassed. They don't have, you know, the confidence in their own language. This applies to anybody who is learning foreign language. Like, you know, if you're learning Japanese, you don't have enough confidence as much as you speak your mother tongue, right? So I did improv comedy and then, you know, practice and then uh, my confidence went up, you know, my, I got tougher, tough experience. And then, you know, everything else is kind of like, you know, it's kind of, I learned a really important life concept, you know, learn to embrace yourself and then learn to improvise. Life's pretty much improvisation. How to, to respond to some unexpected event. Life is like that. And so I got more confidence, uh, even some of the native speakers, because I'm more used to 
you know, unexpected things. I have more certainty about uncertain things. So that's how I improved my confidence, you know, self-esteem, and also practice just speaking, listening, just using it, just practice it with uh, uh, role models like native students. And right now, I'm here working at the uh, American company for, uh, in a, like working as a software engineer for two years, two plus years in North America. Now my language, like English is kind of, compared to my past you know, level, rock solid, especially past one year, it improved quite a bit. Maybe because um, I started making videos on YouTube, uh, start talking about it, start, you know, speaking and just lots of speaking and talking and it just you know, practice makes perfect so so right now i don't really you know feel much difficulty speaking or talking because just you know cycles you know it, it accelerated you know so that's how i transition from being a japanese born japanese uh spent first 20 years in my life moved to Canada or North America, lived in both Canada, United States, Europe as well. I lived in Europe for half a year. Established myself in terms of you know, my identity, uh, got over uh, the little insecurities about my accent. Um, you know, just in a standing tall right now, standing on my feet, you know. So that's my experience. Um, I cannot quite remember how it was like in the beginning. I cannot quite remember the kind of feelings I went th I went through in the beginning, because you know I'm getting older and older. It's been like you know seven years since I came here, and you know I'm I I also worked on self development, focused you know I reframed everything that I didn't want like the negativity or uh, low self esteem thing or bad social skills or how to build a positive and a good life so i worked on it so you know i'm now focused more on present and in the future so i don't barely look back uh, in the past and i don't do that so i can't remember what it's like but i'm pretty sure i know like, i get comments a lot like you know if i tell about my story to other people they get quite impressed about wow you've been through it a lot like you know cultural transition that might not be normal for most people but to me because i transitioned from you know zero to you know 100 opposite culture and i already feel already desensitized it's normal to me it's relative and but most people, culture, even cultural difference, it's gonna freak out many people, right? From west to east, uh, living by yourself could be a big thing for many, you know, high school graduates to kids. I lived my, by myself since 20 and then, then did finance and everything, so became more independent, became more responsible for my future. I, you know, took ownership of my life and then get, uh, got over, you know, the language barrier, insecurity, establishing myself a new culture with nobody around. But anyways, that's how I um, um, learned English. Uh, it's pretty strategic, pretty goal-oriented, and pretty good at, uh, you know, achieving goals, become a ruthless and have disciplines. Some people might, you know, stumble. They might have homesick. I didn't have homesick, to be honest. Um, they might have, you know, um, they might cry. I, I cried like three times in the past seven years. And it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't really just re related to English, but, you know, crying three times. And it wasn't, you know, those three times and not in the first two years. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed my story story about, uh, you know, adapting to Western culture from ja uh, from a Japanese society. If you're curious about, you know, what it's like, cultural transition or anything related to culture, language or Japan uh, or, you know, how to to get software engineering computer science degree what it's like to be a software engineer i'm planning to release more videos about it so do make sure to comment video give me suggestions and then like this video if you liked it uh, subscribe to my channel share if you think your friend is gonna benefit and thank you guys so for uh your support i'll see you guys until next time matane oyasumi nasai bye bye
different now 